Good afternoon. I am Andrea Chisholm with the Midday News. A special welcome if you're watching on OneSpotMedia.com. A high-level probe has been launched into an incident at Pembroke Hall High in St. Andrew in which a teacher threatened a child with violence. TVJ's Shamela Pullen reports. The video captured has been circulating on social media. It lasted for 2 minutes and 20 seconds. In the video, a teacher is seated at her desk in the middle of a lesson when she was interrupted by a student who handed her a piece of paper. The teacher was again interrupted, but this time by a male student. The situation got heated when the student in response raised his voice at the teacher. Principal of Pembroke Hall High, Reverend Claude Ellis, confirmed on RGR's talk show program hotline that the incident happened at the institution on Thursday. We are all disturbed by the incident. This is not something that as a school we condone um, from anyone, either teacher, parent or student. And so, of course, we are disturbed by it. He also outlined the next steps the school will take. I intend to follow the Code of Regulations 1980 that speaks to issues that happen in school. So my critical incident report will be done. My education officer is on route and we will take it from there. Shimela Pullen, TVJ News. In an apparent response to the petition to recognize Jamaican Creole or Patwa as an official language, the Prime Minister thinks Jamaicans are wasting too much time on trivial matters. Andrew Holness also emphasized the importance of preparing Jamaican students to be proficient in the use of English language. TVJ's Shamela Pullen has details. There has been widespread public debate about making Patwa an official language in Jamaica. Persons argue it would help students learn easier, boost foreign exchange earnings, and reduce discrimination against Jamaicans who speak the language. But according to Prime Minister Andrew Holness, English is the language of commerce. Mr. Holness argued that helping Jamaican children to learn the language will enable them to function better in the international community. I was in Korea recently. In 1963, Korea was poorer than Jamaica in terms of its GDP per capita. Today, Korea is in the top 15 economies of the world. According to the Prime Minister, countries that have developed within the last 50 years have invested heavily in education, in particular English language. He thinks Jamaicans should do the same. They have all invested in English. Bear me out. They all have their own languages. But they recognize that English is the language of commerce. So they don't waste time trying to deal with all the social issues surrounding language. The Prime Minister also said Jamaicans' unwillingness to change has resulted in the country developing at a slower pace than others. We tend to want to tear down everything that is proposed that could potentially be uplifting. And we waste 
a great deal of time, effort, and resources trying to find the negative in everything. Not realizing that in this very swift race of life, others are advancing, even those who were behind us, leaving us behind. He was speaking at the function to rename the Spalding High School to the Alphonsus Davis High School on Tuesday. The school was renamed in honor of its former principal who served the institution for 19 years. Shamela Pullen, TVJ News. Local government minister Desmond McKenzie says thieves are making off with the newly installed LED streetlights in Montego Bay. The minister says under an agreement with the Jamaica Public Service, the power company has installed over 10,000 lights and has repaired another 1,200. But the minister says people are removing the street lights, pretending they are repairing them. Well, I want to advise Jamaica that they don't need to take down the light of the pole to repair the light. So anybody who is seen doing that, call the police because it's a thief that is thieving the light. And the government can't spend that amount of money to wipe out the debt and get an agreement to the Jamaica Public Service to put up new lights. And then the people who are to benefit from the lights turn around and steal the lights. Minister McKenzie says the JPS is on track to complete the installation of street lights by the end of the year. Health Minister Dr. Christopher Tufton has responded to concerns that doctors and nurses continue to work in the public health system without being on a pension plan. Speaking on TVJ's All Angles Wednesday, Dr. Tufton said it is something his ministry intends to fix. The Ministry of Finance has granted an additional 1,500 posts, and those will be primarily nurses. Effective when? Um, well, it's, it's, it's supposed to be effective immediately, but it's working its way through the system because it has to filter down through the regions and then the individual hospitals to determine the right sizing of the numbers. But um, it is something that we have worked on, and I'm happy to announce that we are now there. And doctors? Doctors, not yet at that stage. But um, it is something that we need to work on. We have gone as far as to prepare a HR plan to support the build-out that we anticipate over the next three to five years. And it's time for a break, but stay with us. More stories right after these messages. Welcome back and we're continuing the news. Immediate past president of the private sector organization of Jamaica, Howard Mitchell, has again expressed his disapproval with the underdevelopment of Jamaicans seemingly in favor of the development of roads. Mr. Mitchell also added his voice to the increasingly strong relationship between Jamaica and China. TVJ's O'Shane Masters reports. Ladies and gentlemen, <clears throat> I know that this is unpleasant. And so began Howard Mitchell's scathing speech directed at the political leadership in Jamaica. Back in September, Mr. Mitchell reasoned that the government's priority was wrong when it decided to spend money on roads instead of on poor people, particularly those in the inner city. His views were challenged by some government officials who defended their decisions and argued the projects would vindicate them in the future. But Mitchell is not backing down and on Thursday bemoaned how the people were being left behind. We have entrapped almost one-third of our population in inner-city communities called garrisons. Almost all our children are entrapped in an inadequate, unequal, dated, and dysfunctional education system. Whereas in 1962, Singapore, with which we then compared favorably, is now exporting computer chips, integrated circuit chips. We are still exporting banana chips. But despite the concerns, the government is pressing ahead with its focus on roads and other infrastructure. And in fact, has since embarked on a new road project with China, namely the Southern Coastal Highway Improvement Project. 
In addition, only this week in Parliament, the Prime Minister revealed that China has interests in investing in the Cayman as economic zone. So we desperately run from one compromised and dependent relationship with one self-serving and hegemonic superpower to another to sustain ourselves in surviving the consequences of our misguided and non-policy-driven, externally imposed meanderings through incompetent and tribalist governments. Mitchell had this to say about the Jamaica-Chinese relationship, which is blossoming under the watchful eyes of America. In a world where the elephants have begun to fight, and our little ants' nest is right in the middle of their stomping ground. Do we follow the pattern of our delightfully articulate and hardworking foreign minister who says that she will not be drawn into the debate? Or do we posture in the manner of a bantam fowl, like one of our opposition sen senators, and noisily thump our chest and crow defiance at the elephants? The immediate past president of the private sector organization of Jamaica was speaking in St. Andrew on Thursday at a function put on by the quantity surveyors of Jamaica. Shane Masters, TVJ News. Member of Parliament for St. Andrew Southern Mark Golding has called for the National Environment and Planning Agency NEPA to do relevant checks before the government moves forward with its plans for the development of the police headquarters at no man's land. Mr. Golding spoke with our news team following a tour of the Trenchtown Police Station with the National Security Minister Dr. Horace Zhang recently. I think that there needs to be a proper study um, as to the whether or not the, and to what extent and how a facility like that can fit within the overall space of what is around it. Um, and the, an EIA with a difference, not just an environmental impact assessment from the point of view of the, the physical environment and looking at fauna and flora, but a more a social environment study to see how can a massive police facility like that be integrated effectively with, a commu with surrounding communities which have serious social um, problems and also problems with infrastructure and housing issues and so on. And in sports, St. Catherine High and Excelsior will meet in the deciding game of this season's Issa Walker Cup knockout competition after scoring contrasting victories in Thursday's semifinals at the Stadium East. Here's TVJ's Spencer Darlington. In TVJ's Game of the Day, St. Catherine High upset nine-time former champions at St. George's College courtesy of a 5-4 penalty shootout win. St. George's College started out on the front foot and proceeded to dictate the tempo in the first half, where St. Catherine High looked subdued in most areas. St. George's took up the ascendancy when Captain Nathaniel Campbell served up a nice delivery for top marksman Shantamoy Taylor to slot home quite easily in the 40th minute. STGC began the second half in a similar mood to the first as they searched for some added insurance. However, St. Catherine High fought their way back into contention and were rewarded on 64 minutes when their second leading scorer this season, Javon Cole, rifled home from close range. Regulation time and even the five minutes which were added for stoppages ended in a one-all deadlock and so the dreaded penalty kicks were called into play. St. George's College missed their third penalty, while St. Catherine were perfect from the spot. I think we start the game very well, but um, we kind of take a two, three yard step back after the first 20 minutes and allow judges to start playing. You know, we, we spoke about it at length in, at, at, at the break and asked them to stay close and, 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 and be very patient in our, in our, in our approach. And when um, the, the, the opportunity comes, then we must have to take it. And, you know, it, it, we, we bring it to, fine, to the the penalty shootout, and I was very, very confident of, of, the, of the boys. This is something that um, you know we 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 work on a whole lot, and uh, you, you, you can see today. You could see today how how, how, how they look taking those penalties. I think this is our 19th game, and we've only lost one game during the run of play. That was the St. Andrew Technical when we lost 3-1. We lost on penalties here and we lost on penalties to Cornwall College. So, yeah, you're disappointed every time you lose. You're disappointed every time the season ends and, and you don't win anything. But I, I can't give these kids a hard time. I think they worked hard. I think they put out their best, which is what I ask. I ask for them to have fun playing schoolboy football and, and to, to leave everything on the park. And I think they did. Spencer Darlington, TVJ Sports. And that's the Midday News. I'm Andrea Chisholm. Join us at 7 for the Primetime News Package. On behalf of the news, sports and production teams, good afternoon and have a great weekend.